MMA fans in the entire world. At the top of the marquee stands a pair of veteran heavyweights. It's almost a home game for Josh Barnett, fighting in Japan for the 17th time in his near two decades long career. He takes on Roy Nelson and his trademark overhand right, one of the most devastating weapons in the division. The FS1 UFC weigh-in show starts right now. Hi folks and welcome to a primetime edition of the UFC weigh-in show from Los Angeles. Karen Bryan here alongside two guys with tons of frequent flyer, Miles, Brian, Stan, and Michael Bisping. Caroline Pierce is on location as well. And Brian, thank you for taking the flight to L.A. rather than Tokyo. You know you fly a lot when, you, when the L.A. trip for four hours is your short trip. So <laughs> yeah. it's nice. Nice to see you. And Michael, of course, you're going to put some miles and go to Australia. Yeah, that's right. Seven weeks I'll be flying down under, taking on Robert Whittaker. But it's nice to have a night off from the training, from getting punched in the face and talk to you fine people. Very nice. Well, folks, let's get right to it. Brian, tell the people about the main event between Josh Barnett and Roy Nelson. Well, let's kick things off with Josh Barnett. He's one of the all-time greats in the UFC, in the heavyweight division overall in mixed martial arts, and he returns back to Japan where he is very familiar making this long flight and fighting there. A brutal guy everywhere in the sport, a crafty veteran, but he's also very good in the in-between phases. On the ground, he submitted some of the best guys in the world. His ground and pound is fantastic, where I really think we're going to see him shine in this matchup is inside the clinch where he is also very, very dangerous. And of course, he's taking on Roy Big Country Nelson. This is a guy that they say he has good grappling. Apparently, he has a black belt. But I tell you what, you never see it because he's always looking for one thing and one thing only, and that is the knockout. The guy holds the record for absorbing the most strikes. Now, that's not a good thing to be the holder of, but it says one thing. He has a good chin, and he's looking for the knockout all the time. Both gentlemen are finishers for sure. And Michael, in our co-main event, I know you're going to be watching this one yes. closely. You're still active in the 185 division. We've got Gabe guard Musasi and Uriah Hall throwing down. Yeah, that's right. We've got the promise of Uriah Hall taking on the experience of Musasi. Musasi is one of the most experienced in the whole, uh, sorry, experienced fighters in the whole of MMA. He's a great boxer. He's a great kickboxer. He's a fantastic wrestler and submission artist. Um, a former dream champion, strike force champion. He's fought on all the major organizations all over the world. Of course, Uriah Hall, he had the breakout season of the Ultimate Fighter. Looked incredible. Struggled a little since coming out of the Ultimate Fighter. He's won some He's lost some by decision, but this for him is a massive opportunity to break into the top 10 and, you know, really make a name in the UFC. Yeah, a huge jump in competition for Uriah Hall. And for Gegard Mousasi, with all the experience and the former titles that he's had, you know, I feel like we're actually seeing the best Mousasi we've ever seen now. And he even mentioned that this week. Yep. He feels like he's finally now poised for a title. All right. Vote. Well, let's get out to Japan with Kenny Florian making his MC debut. Take it away, Ken Flo. Hello Japan, I am Kenny Florian and welcome to UFC Fight Night. Barnett versus Nelson, here are our lovely UFC Octagon girls, director of talent relations, Sean Shelby, and our general manager of UFC Asia, Ken Berger. Our first fight is a welterweight bout between Shincho Animal Ensai and Roger Viva Zapata. First up on the scale, Roger Zapata. Tomorrow night, two legendary heavyweights meet for the first time as Josh Barnett takes on Roy Nelson in a long-awaited matchup. Plus, Gegard Mousasi takes on Uriah Hall. It all starts at 10 p.m. Eastern, only on FS1. One seventy-one for Roger Zapata. Next up on the scale is Shinsho Anzai. Tomorrow, a Fox College Saturday doubleheader kicks off with a showdown between undefeated Big 12 rivals as third-ranked TCU takes on Texas Tech at 4 p.m. Eastern, only on Fox and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Next fight 
in the lightweight division. Nayuki Kotani against Raijin Cajun Johnson. First up on the scale, Cajun Johnson. Tristar's Cajun Johnson has a very philosophical mind and after he suffered two knockout losses in his UFC career, he completely revamped both the way he thinks and the way he fights. He's decided he no longer believes in one style of fighting, but instead he's employing collective range of movement. He said he has this talent for movement and he wants to emulate Bruce Lee. Cajun Johnson. Next up on the scale, Nayuki Kotani. Nayuki Kotani started his martial arts training, much like myself, rolling around on the living room floor with his older brother. However, his official fight career got started at the age of 17. A judo black belt who's obviously very skilled in jiu-jitsu as he holds 25 submission victories. And if that wasn't sweet enough, he's also a trained patissier or pastry chef who specializes in making cakes. 156 for Kotani. Next up is another lightweight bout between Sergeant Nick Hine and Yusuke Kasuya. First up on the scale, Yusuke Kasuya. Wednesday, don't miss UFC tonight as the best team of analysts in the sport break down all of this weekend's action and take a look ahead to next weekend's UFC 192 with special guests including light heavyweight champion Daniel Cormier, former welterweight champion Johnny Hendricks and top flyweight Joseph Benavidez. UFC tonight is Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern only on FS1 and streaming live on Fox Sports Go. One fifty-six for Yusuke Kazuya. Next up on the scale, Nick Hyde. Sergeant Nick Hyde is arguably one of the most interesting characters in the UFC. And last year, the police force gave him an ultimatum: choose to fight crime or fight in the octagon. He chose the latter, and he's just spent his second camp in Thailand at Tiger Muay Thai, where he plans to make a permanent move with his Japanese wife. One fifty five for Nick High. Our next fight is in the welterweight division. Keita Keitaro Nakamura against Lee Jinglong. First up on the scale. Lee, the leech, Jing Lung. Lee Jing Leung was a guy, when he came to the UFC, a lot of fighters expected him to wash out because MMA was so new to the Chinese scene. He's improved tremendously, though. In fact, he's averaging now 3.72 significant strikes per minute, which just puts him outside of the top 10 all time in the welterweight division.
Tomorrow, the postseason races are coming down to the wire, starting on Fox with a battle for control of the NL wildcard between the Pirates and Cubs, or the Rangers and Astros square off in a Lone Star showdown for AL West supremacy. Then the Brewers take on the NL Central leading Cardinals in a game you can only see on FS1. Coverage starts tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. Eastern on Fox and continues at 6.30 p.m. Eastern on FS1. 70. 170 for Nakamura! Welcome back to Los Angeles. You can catch the next six fights on FS1, the exclusive home of the UFC, tomorrow, starting with the Road to Japan finale between Mizuto Hirota and Taruto Ishihara. Up first, the 24-year-old Ishihara. Teruto Ishihara! Ishihara, he's a bit of a character, this guy. He said that he only got into fighting to attract good-looking girls from around the world. And he also says that his opponent should consider retirement because he's too old. When asked what it meant to him to fight in the UFC, he said it's simply a stage to perform to attract women from all over the world. So it's all about the women with this guy and all oh, about no. the He's taking it to the ring, girl. Well, I there love it. I love it. I got to wonder, though, does that hairstyle work over there? Oh. 46. 146 for Kenuto Ishihara. Next up on the scale is Mizuto Hirota. Wednesday, tensions are high as one of the coaches loses his cool on a fighter in front of the team and McGregor and Favor argue over coaching styles. The Ultimate Fighter is Wednesday at 10 p.m. Eastern and Pacific, only on FS1. Now, I'll tell you what, Hirota may be the older guy in this matchup, but he's won a lot of titles outside of the UFC. Senguko, Deep, Cage Force, been the lightweight champion of all three of those organizations, all big organizations that feed into the UFC. And he's had some closely contested matchups in his UFC stint so far. Back this time around, I think he's got a very favorable matchup. Strong guy. Interesting to see who wins. And now that you've mentioned the trash talk, Mike. <laughs> 146 for Terutori Shihara. Hirota also has a lot of power in those hands. When I was researching him this week, he dropped a few people with one, one shot. So uh, Ishihara better be careful what he says. Next up is a featherweight bout between Katsunori Kikuno against Diego Didi Brandao. First up on the scale, Diego Brandao. When I first met Diego on season 14 of The Ultimate Fighter, he was an absolute monster. He fought with reckless abandon, which resulted in him winning that season and stopping all of his opponents, including Steven Seiler, Brian Caraway, and Dennis Bermudez. As his UFC career progressed and the competition got harder, he's had to evolve a little. He's still very dangerous and aggressive, just a little smarter, with more miles on the clock. He used to start all of his fights super fast and kind of run out of gas as the fight progressed. He either knocked them out in the first round, or he kind of gasped. But so he's learned. Experience is a big thing. 46. 146 for Diego Brunda. Next up on the scale, Katsunui Kikuro. Kikuno is a master of Kyokushin Karate, which actually doesn't allow elbow or hand strikes to the head, but you can kick to the head. So when you evaluate the tape of Kikuno early in his career, massive kicker. He utilized a lot of kicks, and he's gotten away from that so far in his UFC career, which is unfortunate because this guy owns a front kick of doom. He calls it a moon kick, and when you watch his highlights, he drops people, guys after guys, with this body kick. It looks like a crescent kick, but then he points the toes at the end of it and gets you right in the gut. We'll see if he uses that against Brandau as he gasses later in the round. 145 for Kikuno. You leave my friend Brandau alone, okay? Hey, I trained with Brandau for years, but when you know you got a guy who slows down, the fight progresses, a body kick could be an interesting weapon. We'll see if Kikuno gets back to his Kyokushin roots. But you know, Kikuno, he carries his hands very Ooh. low, so that's not a good idea against someone like Brandau. I've watched Brandau in the gym drop many people with that right yeah. hand left hook combo. And I think we're gonna see a wild Diego Brandau tomorrow night. I really do. I think he's gonna go back to his, his crazy roots. Is in the division. 
Takeya Mizubaki against George Root. First up on the scale is George Root. Tuesday, Premier Boxing Champions returns as undefeated Javier Fortuna takes on Carlos Velasquez live from Las Vegas. Coverage begins at 9 p.m. Eastern, only on FS1. George Roop has had some fantastic results while fighting under the Zufa banner, and the highlight of which include a knockout over the Korean Zombie. But he admits that one problem that has plagued his career is inconsistency. Disappointed with some of his results inside the octagon, Roop said he's one of the best in the world that can knock them all out or submit them. 135 for George Roop! And expects to start that elusive win streak this weekend when he takes Next on Mizugaki. Next up on the scale is Takeya Mizugaki. And 6 for one for the division. Takaya Mizugaki has sporting interests outside of mixed martial arts and he's telling me about his passion for cycling. He started riding originally to keep the weight off during camp but he fell in love with it and he now has his own column in a triathlon magazine in Japan. So I'm assuming cardio won't be an issue then? <laughs> Probably not. You know, the only thing that happens sometimes when guys convert to that style of cardio is they start to lose a tremendous amount of power. And power in Mizugaki's hands was his biggest advantage coming into this matchup. 136 for Mizugaki! Let's check out this height and reach difference here. You know, George Roop kind of looks like Michael Bisming if you left him in the sauna for like a week. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the best compliment I've ever had. Kyoji Horiguchi against Chico Kamen. First up on the scale, Chico Kamen. Chico Camus is becoming accustomed to fighting far from home and the sacrifices that go with it. He missed his eldest son Armani's 10th birthday while he fights here in Japan, but he wants to show his son, who watches all of his fights and the rest of the world, exactly what he can do in this 125 pound division. He's one of the biggest sleepers on the card right now. He's, one, he's a huge underdog in this fight. Really surprised by that. When you watch his fight with Henry Cejudo, you can see some legitimate skill. Those rounds were very, very close. Camus is a guy who I think is underachieved so far in the UFC and is a real sleeper in this division. Well, we know that all the guys that come out of Rufus Ford are tough as nails. Tough as nails, but as Brian said, the takedown defense against the Olympic yeah. gold medalist in that fight against Cejudo was fantastic. It's I don't think Cejudo got a single I don't takedown. Think so. He did, right at the end of round three, which sealed that round for Cejudo and, and really could have cost Camus the fight. I appreciate you calling me out there, Brian. Thank you. I, I know, appreciate I was, I, Michael I was, too, so. <laughs> you, you wouldn't let it lie. 126.5. Oh. 126.5 for Chico Camus. He has half a pound. one hour to lose a half a pound. One hour to lose weight. That's one, in, in, a, in a massive arena that's probably freezing cold with air conditioning right now. That's very difficult to restart Next your body to sweat. But he will give up 20% of his purse if he does not make the weight. Here, Horiguchi is a guy, when you break down the numbers, you look at his four UFC wins, he outstruck his opponents 264 to 100. In significant strikes, 170 to 71. That's over the course of four fights. When he fought the champion, he was so stifled by the pressure, he got outstruck 66 to 31. Tells you a lot about his style, and it tells you just how dominant our champion of the flyweight division is. I think Horiguchi needs a lot more volume to make his style more effective to deal with the speed of this weight division. 125 for Horiguchi! A very happy Horiguchi by the looks of things there. Owner of some of the most vicious body kicks in this weight division. I don't think Chico has any problem losing half a pound. No. Throw the sweatsuit on, get busy, he'll get rid of that. is the middleweight belt between Gegar Musashi and Uriah Primetime Hall. First up on the stage, Uriah Hall. You know, Uriah's coming into this fight as an underdog in most people's eyes and certainly coming into it with a lot of pressure on his shoulders, but that said, I was watching him on Periscope this week and you know, you wouldn't think so looking at him. He was very calm, he was very relaxed and he truly does believe in himself. He thinks this is gonna be a great breakout performance and it's finally gonna get him into the top 10 and it's gonna make up for some of those lackluster performances he's had in the past. Now we do know this is a quick turnaround for him. He just fought in yep. August. Do you guys like that? Does that count? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it was an absolute smashing. So I think Bang it's not Boche. a big turnaround at all. It was a first round finish, but still, in all, you still have to get your body to peak. 
twice uh, in, a, in a short period of time. 186 for your ride right home! No, no doubt, it's definitely a concern. He must, he wouldn't have taken Jacob this, I don't think, if he wasn't healthy and ready to go. Yeah, interesting about Musasi, he said this week that he primarily trains with all heavyweights, which most people would tell you to avoid because of injuries and over-sparring and degrading your chin. But when you break down Musasi's tape and you watch his style, you can tell he trains with heavyweights. He's a guy, never wastes energy in there, never muscles a technique, especially on the ground. Everything is technical, flawless, and you can see guys usually obtain those kinds of skills and technique when they train with bigger, stronger guys. That's exactly what I was just about to say. If you train with bigger guys, the technique has to be perfect, whereas on the flip side, you train with smaller guys, you start making sloppy mistakes. So, you know, if you can avoid the injuries, a very smart idea. Yeah, and, and he's a guy that when he gets you on the ground, his ground game, he grapples a lot heavier than that physique and frame show you. We saw that against uh, Costa Filippo. Okay, now let's take a closer look at the two men involved in our main event. Miami born and bred fighter. I've put my time and life's energy into this. I've been preparing to be a UFC champion all my life. I walk in there with an immense amount of knowledge. I can hit and move. You know, there's pretty much nothing that can stop me from going where I want to go. Roy Nelson versus Josh Barnett is a wild fight for the heavyweight division. A win by either one of these men will establish them as one of the top contenders in this UFC heavyweight division. If anybody knows anything about myself or Roy, we don't go out there to find the path of least resistance. We go out there to finish our opponents. Standing up, both men have outstanding skills. When it goes to the ground, it's a crazy battle between Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and catch wrestling, between two guys that are extremely talented and fight at a very high level. I didn't get into this to, to lose fights. I got into this to be the best in the world. I'm gonna get right into Roy's face from, from the get. We put pressure on him. I'm gonna put him somewhere he didn't want to be. I'm gonna give him a reason to say I'm done. I definitely have more power than he does. One punch can change the outcome of any fight. That's what I do, I just knock people out. First up on the scale, Roy Big Country Nelson. I'll tell you, you could add me to that list of highlights on the receiving end of that big overhand right. The first professional fighter I ever sparred with was Roy Big Country Nelson. I had just been back in the continental US for five days. He hit me so hard that sand blew right out of both my eardrums. And it was in a ring. In a ring, and you don't usually see this outside of professional wrestling, but my back went all the way up on the ropes and I almost slipped over. Barnett. Well, it's funny you say that, Brian, because I have a similar story about Barnett. I used to train with him at CSW with Eric Paulson in Fullerton. And when you look at Josh, obviously he's a very big man, but he's kind of soft. So I thought, I bet he's not that strong. And when we clinched up and we grappled, my word, he threw me round like a rag doll and applied some very painful submissions. So don't judge a book by its cover. I'm sure we've all heard that one before, but let me tell you, Josh is a strong, violent, angry man. And certainly leaner than the last time we've seen him. Definitely. 239 for Josh Barnett! That's probably the best condition we've ever seen yep. him in in a UFC fight. And like you said, Mike, I mean, this is one of the best submission artists in the heavyweight division. One, I mean, and just outside of mixed martial arts, just in grappling, period. This guy's fantastic with his catch wrestling. And he's coming into this fight angry. He's angry about how that Travis Brown fight went down. And he feels he needs to prove to the world he's one of the best. And an amazing car, Japan. Thank you very much. 
We will see you tomorrow. All right. Thank you very much, Ken Flo. Welcome back to Los Angeles. Now, guys, I know we didn't get to see Roy uh, without his shirt on. Josh looking a lot leaner. What's your first impression from the scale? Well, that was it. It was Josh Barnett. This is a five-round fight. He's talked about what he wants to do. He wants to finish uh, Roy Nelson in the later rounds. He definitely looks to be in the best condition that I've ever seen him in. Yeah, absolutely. As I was just saying when he was on the scale, you know, as you said, he does he typically looks a little soft. On this occasion, the best shape I've ever seen him. I think he's very motivated. He's trained hard. I listened to him earlier this week in an interview. He said he's trained like he's never trained before. I'm expecting the best.